What is going on, guys? It is Friday, February the 18th, and that means it's time for my news radar. Over the last few years, there's been a sort of quiet secret battle that almost no one is paying attention to going on between Google and Microsoft for enterprise, for school, for sorts of settings wherein large amounts of computers, for all intents and purposes, are distributed out to groups of people. Google's push for this has been Chrome OS and Chromebooks. They're cheap, they're easy to manage over a network, and they're perfect for schools and for exactly what I'm talking about, even though for years and years and years, Microsoft had a stranglehold as far as the operating system goes on this sort of sector. Well, now Chrome OS, Google, they pretty much have taken over and become the dominant force in this area. However, there is a new move Google is making because it's one thing to sell new pieces of hardware, new Chromebooks, new laptops to these sorts of groups. But what if you could actually take the old hardware that already is deployed and already exists, that's running competitor software, and then steal that away from them as well. Probably ensuring that when an upgrade does come around, they're gonna be used to your software and they're gonna go ahead and continue using your software even further down the road. Well, that's exactly what Chrome OS Flex aims to be. If you remember, a while back, Cloud Ready was this company that put out the software where you could essentially install Chrome OS on non-Google Chrome hardware. Well, Google bought them out and they've turned Cloud Ready into Chrome OS Flex. And the pitch for this is similar to Cloud Ready's pitch, but a little bit different. So if you remember back when Cloud Ready was a thing, their pitch was, hey, take your old deprecated slow piece of crap computer, put Chrome OS on it, and the sucker is going to absolutely fly. You're going to be able to browse the web and do all these things safely, no real risk of viruses. So your old computer becomes a living computer once again. And that's exactly what Chrome OS Flex is going to try to do. But in that sort of enterprise or school, in that sort of sector. 9 to 5 Google here says, build as a free to download operating system by Google. The original team directly integrated the benefits of Cloud Ready into a new version of Chrome OS. It offers the same interface, Chrome browser, cross-device feature integrations with Android Cloud Sync, Google Assistant, and other features include Family Link, Smart Lock, Instant Tethering, and Nearby Sharing. This is a pretty decent little deal. And it's really easy to install. As you can see, the instructions are sort of here on screen. You basically just plug in a USB drive. It will install it onto a flash drive, plug it in, and, and boot into it, and install it. It's just like installing any other operating system. And apparently, the Requirements are extraordinarily low. This will run on almost anything, including some Apple devices are gonna be fully capable of running Chrome OS Flex as well. Now, of course, if you're just doing this on your own, this is free, but if you're going to be using this for enterprise or education, there are upgrades that need to be purchased from there. And that's kind of the way that they're going to make their money on this is that they're gonna to try to get schools and enterprise to take their old fleet of garbage laptops upgrade them to Chrome OS Flex, buy the education upgrades, and off you go. And honestly, that's gonna be cheaper for a lot of these schools. If you've got these old laptops that are just slow and not working very well, this is a pretty good option for this. The only thing that holds this thing back for me is the fact that Android apps are not going to be compatible at the moment. Now, this may or may not come around later, but for right now, Android apps are not going to be a thing on Chrome OS Flex. And I think for me, you know, I've got some old pieces of hardware that I would like to try this on, and I still may try it on it just to see what would happen. But without the Android apps, I think that does pull it back a little bit. But sticking with Chrome OS here, and also with the idea of Google and Microsoft directly competing on software and on features, let's talk about something that was uncovered here very recently, I believe, using the new Android 13 Developer Preview 1. But first... Let's talk about what Microsoft has done to kind of give the comparison because what we're going to be talking about here is once again a place where Microsoft has presented a piece of software, a feature, a thing that one can do with your phone and your computer and Google coming in behind them and replicating the same exact feature set with their own software, their own competing software. So Microsoft has a piece of software 
called Microsoft Your Phone. And what the Your Phone app enables you to do is to see your text messages, to see your photos, to see your apps, and then to most importantly, run your apps directly on your computer streamed from your phone. So this YouTube app right here that is running is being streamed from my Surface Duo 2 to my computer wirelessly and it is fully usable. I can play a video, I can do whatever I wanted to do. Now, of course, I could also just view the entire phone screen should I choose to do that, but I can also stream apps directly to the computer. And that is exactly what Google is trying to copy here with this piece of software. Jumping back to 9to5 Google for the scoop here once again, Pixel will be able to stream Android apps to your Chromebook and PC. Here's how it works on video. And you can see here a picture, a picture of a Chromebook with this software running on it. It says here, last week, Google publicly released the first Android 13 developer preview build for Pixel phones. And in it, there are two cross-device service apps. With these apps, Dylan Rosel, Russell, Rosel, was able to enable cross-device streaming between a Pixel phone and Android 13 and a special web app. So currently, I don't know if this is going to stay that way, maybe it will, but currently it is a web app. And we have here a video, again, 9 to 5 Google there, so uh, just so you know, you know, forget who did this. You see here what's going on. So let's roll this back a little bit. You have over on the right what appears to be notifications, right, from your, in this case, Pixel device. And that layout should look kind of similar to you because it's really similar to the layout on the Your Phone app where your notifications are now over here on the left and then everything else kind of happens over here on the right. Well, it's basically just kind of the flippy flopped version of exactly that. So in this video here, we've got a notification from Twitter. This user then interacts with that notification and it opens up in this window here for him to respond to a direct message with his computer. And it's hard to see here because of, of the play progress here, but you can vaguely see at the bottom that this is Chrome OS running down there below. Now going further with that here, now it appears that they just have a Twitter app open and they're typing out a tweet. And you can see up here at the top, there are different controls to change the size of the window. So on the Your Phone app, when you're actually streaming an app, let's jump back over here and I will show you this again. Let's do, uh, let's do apples to apples here. Let's open up Twitter. Okay, there you go. Here, you can freeform change the size of the window. Now it's going to keep the same aspect ratio, right? And in this case, it will mimic the aspect ratio of the device you're using it on, but you can move it around however you want, but things aren't really going to reflow. You're mostly just changing the size of that window. Whereas here, as you see him come up here and click these buttons here in just a moment, it sort of reflows as it changes size between the different sorts of aspect ratios. It's a little bit jankier, but this is early. But like I said, it is actually reflow. And there is full Twitter itself, and he's able to interact with it and use it in a very similar way to what I was doing. Of course, one big difference is that, again, on the Your Phone app, these windows can be freely moved around. I can move it onto different desktops. I can actually... Uh, use the window snapping feature. I can actually pin them to my taskbar or to my start menu in order to access them even more quickly. So these are features that are not going to be a thing with this piece of software. So in some ways, I've seen a lot of ways Microsoft software is better. Now that is on Windows and Mac OS because on Chrome OS, this is going to be integrated in a deeper way connected through the phone hub application where you do get sort of a windowed kind of thing like what we're getting on the Your Phone app. But all in all, I think this is really, really fascinating because you have the same problem trying to be solved, right? I'm here at my computer and I want to access my phone. I don't want to have to be keyboard, keyboard, typing, 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 oh, phone, pick up the phone. I want to be able to just simply look over to my other monitor, see my notifications, interact with them, dismiss them, respond to them, whatever, and then maybe even use the app directly on my computer should I see fit to do that. And I use the Your Phone app 
all the time. Almost always, that app is on my right monitor so that I can see my text messages, I can see my notifications right there without having to really change my focus at all. And Google is trying to solve this exact same problem with competing software. It would have been interesting to see what would happen if the two cooperated on a solution, but instead they are competing on a solution once again. And let's wrap things up today by talking about something that is finally coming to those of us who have Windows 11. So the Android app beta has been a thing if you've been on not the public release version of Windows 11, but the beta or the dev channel. Well, now it is actually coming to the full main version of Windows 11. You can check your updates and see maybe if it's time for you to update. And if you have done this update. All you have to do is go to the Microsoft Store and you should see a ginormous banner which will enable you to choose an app and whenever you go to install, it's going to tell you to get the Amazon App Store. It will take you through a rather uh, brief process. It seems to be quicker now than it was when it was on beta. Once you reboot, then you will have access to the Amazon App Store and you can install uh, what is apparently thousands of apps now that are in this store. This is still terrible. All this is still awful because they don't show you most of the apps that are in the store, but apparently there are more apps than what we are just seeing here. Although there is a relatively easy way to install applications that are not in the Amazon App Store. I've talked about this in prior videos and if you'd like to see an updated version of that tutorial, let me know in the comments down below and I will think about doing that. Let me just say this though, I've got this Amazon App Store, I've, I've sideloaded a few apps that are in the App Store as well, and I just don't know how much I'm going to wind up using. I was someone that was very excited about this when it first got announced. I was like, man, this is really, really cool to have access to these apps, but here's the thing. I'm not really using them very much. In fact, when I do go to use an Android app on my desktop, way more often than not, I'm just going to the Your Phone app and I'm just streaming apps directly off of my phone like I just showed you earlier. I don't know what it is about it. Maybe it's that I'm already logged in. Maybe it's because they just functionally work a bit better for some reason. Maybe it's because I can access apps that aren't available to me because I don't have the Google Play services. Apparently you can sideload Google Play services too. I've not messed with that because it's just more complicated than I want to get into. And I already have a functional solution to this problem that works really, really easily and works really quickly. And my phone's always right here with me. It's my apps. I'm already logged in. Maybe that's the better solution, but I would love to know what you guys think. Is the Amazon App Store something that you're actually interested in? I actually want to use them more on my Surface Pro 7 because of the touchscreen than on my desktop, but even still, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Have you tried this out? Have you downloaded it? Are you interested? Are you going to totally ignore it? Let me know. And guys, thanks for making it through today's episode of News Radar. I do post episodes every Monday and Friday in addition to the other four or so videos I post every single week. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any videos coming up. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.